Hi guys, welcome to Watch Advice, I'm Neha. Today I'll be comparing the latest Rolex GMT Master 2 reference 126710 BLNR to the older 116710 model. In this video, I'll take you through the four key differences, give you my thoughts on how they wear, discuss pricing, and give you some advice on buying these watches from the grey market if that's what you're considering. So, keep watching to find out more. Before we start, I wanted to say a massive thank you for your love and support on my last two videos. If you haven't seen my previous videos, click here to see them. I would love it if you've subscribed to our channel so that I can keep making these videos for you guys. And if you've already subscribed, thank you so much. Remember to turn on the bell icon so you can be notified of my upcoming videos. Let's get into it. This GMT story began in 2013 when the model 116710, also known as Batman, was released at Baselworld. This model grabbed attention because of its bicolor ceramic basil, also known as Cerachrome basil. The colors of the basil are blue and black, which is why it's known as Batman, my favorite DC character. This watch has become so popular that there are long waiting lists. And last year, the new model, 126710, also known as Batgirl, was released, replacing Batman. So what's the difference? Let's find out. The biggest difference and the most obvious one is the bracelet. The Oyster bracelet on the 2013 model has broad, flat three-piece links with brushed outer links and polished center links. It's the most universal bracelet in the Oyster collection and was actually introduced in 1930s. This Oyster bracelet has a classy yet sporty look, which perfectly describes my friend the Batman when he's in action. The 2019 model has a five-piece link Jubilee bracelet, which also has brushed outer links and polished center links. I find the Jubilee bracelet really striking, especially because of the way it shines. It stands out well when compared with the Oyster bracelet. I think the Jubilee bracelet is more elegant and appears to be more of a dress watch, something that Bruce Wayne would wear to parties. Fun fact, did you know this bracelet was designed and made specially for the launch of the Oyster Perpetual date just in 1945? It's so impressive that people still love the look to this day. Even though the bracelets look different, they're both made from oyster steel. What's oyster steel you ask? Good question. Oyster steel is specifically developed by Rolex. It belongs to the 904L steel family, which is commonly used in high technology and in the aerospace and chemical industries. It's extremely resistant and it offers an exceptional finish once polished and it maintains its beauty even in the harshest environments. I think this durability is so important in luxury watches. When you're paying so much money, you want it to last you many, many years. Both Jubilee and Oyster bracelets have a folding Oyster lock safety clasp that lets you adjust the bracelet by five millimeters when you need to. Let me tell you a story about the safety clasp and how it saved a watch from being stolen. A couple of years ago, my husband and I were walking around Lake Geneva. That night, he was wearing his Batman. We had these two guys come up to us. They said hello, they shook our hands, and while shaking our hands, they were asking us what we were doing in Geneva, how long we were there, asking us about our itinerary. They seemed friendly enough, so we didn't question it too much. But then one of the guys tried to take my husband's watch off his wrist, which he fell straight away, so he, he pulled his wrist away, and he said, what are you doing? At that point, those guys ran off. I was seriously shaken. It's something that I've never experienced in my life before and I actually didn't even know how to respond because it happened all so quickly. And all I said to my husband was, let's go back to the hotel. But seriously, it was a safety clasp that saved his watch from being stolen and I'm so grateful. So back to the bracelets. Out of the two bracelets, I personally prefer the Jubilee bracelet because I find it more comfortable. It feels light and it generally sits better on my 5.7 inch wrist. My husband also prefers to wear the Jubilee bracelet on his six and a half inch wrist. So now that we've covered off the bracelets, let's talk about the second change, which is in the dial. Can you guys spot the difference? If you spotted the Rolex crown at the six o'clock mark between the words Swiss and made, then you're correct. Other than that difference, the hour markers and the hands on both watches are made from 18 karat white gold to prevent tarnishing. They also have Rolex's chroma light loom, which when charged emits a bluish greenish glow. The third change is in the movement of Batgirl. It has the new 3285 caliber movement, which has increased the power reserve from 48 hours offered in Batman to 70 hours. Just like the old 3186 movement, this movement was also developed in-house and offers functions of center hour, minutes, seconds, and the second time zone displayed through the 24 hour hand. You can obviously change the date, and those of you rushing, it offers quick setting of the hour hand. 
This caliber movement was released in 2018 and it can be found in all new GMT Master 2 models. The fourth change lies in the casing of the new model 126710. This particular change can only be seen when you have the new and the old models side by side. As you can see, the lugs of the new model are slightly trimmed compared to the older model, making the case look somewhat smaller. Now let me show you how this watch wears on my 5.7 inch wrist. As you can see, the lugs sit well on my wrist, the watch isn't really sticking out for a wrist size of mine. When I initially wore this watch, I found it heavy, but as I've been wearing it on and off for some time, I'm used to it, and now it feels snug and comfortable. On my husband's 6.5 inch wrist, the watch sits perfectly and looks great. Minus the arm hair. Recently, my husband and I went to Queenstown in New Zealand. For those of you that don't know, Queenstown is known as the world's adventure capital. And for those of you who don't know me, I love adventure and thrill rides. So naturally, I convinced my husband to get on the Never Swing with me. The Never Swing is an adventure activity in Queenstown. Let me paint this picture for you. We're 120 meters above ground, about to step off that platform onto a swing, then had a 70 meter free fall drop, and then swung across the valley, which is the size of three rugby fields. And guess what? I did that wearing Batgirl. So I think it's safe to say that this watch handles excitement really well. Now that we've gone over the changes, let's talk about the price. As of 1st of January 2020, Rolex has increased the price of 126710 BLNR to 13,600 Australian dollars. But will that stop people from buying this model? Absolutely not. As we know, all Rolex sports models have huge weight lists and this model is no different. If anything, the chase and the weight make you want it even more. When Batgirl was released in 2019, the price on the grey market increased to almost 35,000 Australian dollars, which is around three times more than the retail price at the time. Over the course of last year, the price has come down significantly as Rolex have increased their production numbers and there are more BLNRs available in the market. The current price on the grey market is fluctuating in the region of 20 to 23,000 Australian dollars, depending on the quality. With the announcement of Batgirl, Batman became an instant classic as it was no longer in production. The price on the grey market increased to more than 20,000 Australian dollars and over the past year, it's remained that way. If you're looking to purchase Batman from the grey market, keep in mind that its production stopped in 2019. And so all the watches that are on the market will have less than five years of warranty left and in worst case, no warranty at all. And its price should reflect that. This is definitely something you'll need to consider when purchasing. If you've decided to pay the premium on the Batgirl, because you haven't had any luck with ADs, then you may get personal satisfaction every time you wear it, but you may also question if you've paid too much, especially because there are so many other watches in that price bracket on the market. I'm happy to suggest a few, but there'll have to be another video. So guys, after considering these changes, and most importantly, the price, the question is, which one are you? 126710 Batgirl or 116710 Batman? I'd love to know your thoughts. Please let me know by leaving a comment down below. We all know the value of hard earned money, but I feel the need to give you some advice on buying from grey market if that's what you're considering. So here are my three top tips. Number one, do your research before buying. That includes the price and the seller. If the price sounds too good to be true, chances are it is. If you're a seller, you wanna make sure you get the best possible price. So selling at a price that's much lower than the current market price could mean one of two things. Either it needs to be sold urgently or it doesn't have official paperwork. And this leads me to my second tip. Always look for a watch with official paperwork. What's official paperwork you ask? Well, when it comes to Rolex, it includes the warranty card, which sits in a green leather pouch, a product operation booklet, a guarantee manual, and a green seal swing tag. And whilst this is in packaging, check the box and check the finer details, like matching the serial number on the watch to the warranty card. Drum roll for my final tip because it's probably the most important one. Inspect it before you buy it. Even if that means flying interstate to see the watch. After all, what's a few hundred dollars when you're about to spend tens of thousands of dollars on a watch? If you have family or friends in the area of the seller, get them to inspect it for you. You can even get the watch and the documents verified by a secondhand watch dealer for a small fee that will give you an extra peace of mind. If you can't do any of these things, then really think about whether it's worth taking the risk because these days, the quality of fake watches are really impressive and it's getting harder and harder to tell the difference between real ones and fake ones. I'm not trying to scare you guys, just pointing out that it's important you do your homework. Now these tips are pretty basic guys, but I hope they're a good reminder because they can be overlooked in the excitement of finding your dream watch. 
So guys, that wraps up today's video. I hope you found it valuable. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Also remember to hit the bell icon so you can get notified of my new videos. And hey, I'm on Instagram as well. My handle is Miss Nene. That's M1SS Nene because a million other people took my real name. Until next time, if you love it, then rock it with confidence. Okay, bye. Oh, hey, I had a lot of fun making this video. Stuffed up a few times along the way. Here's a couple for your entertainment. Drum roll for my final tip because it's probably the most important one, but buy it before you inspect it. <laughs> well, when it comes to Rolex, it includes the warranty card, which sits in a green leather pouch, a product operation booklet, <laughs> guarantee manual and a green seal swing tag.